Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, we're going to be discussing the TSAS Raider in 45 ACP. As you can see, this is a Colt M45A1 clone. And that's really interesting because Colt M45A1s are $2,000 or significantly higher if you're looking for actual used models or their pre-changed uh, uh, model. Whereas this is a $500 1911. Specifically, I got this for $450, which I consider a steal. So today, we're not going to be talking about shooting the gun and the reliability of the platform, accuracy, all of that. I will have an expanded review in the future, but this is mostly going to be me talking about the fit, the finish, as well as kind of the heritage behind the Colt M45A1, which I'm actually going to start with right now. Uh, I guess before I do, just like this video if you enjoy my content. Comment down below if you want to comment and you want to give video suggestions or ideas or criticisms. Um, and ring that bell notification if you want to be notified when I upload. I really appreciate everyone's support. Okay, so the Colt M45A1. I've wanted an M45A1 for a long time. I actually ended up with this gold cup instead of an M45A1 for one of my first 1911s because M45A1s are just so goddamn expensive. Uh, M45A1 of old, when it was first introduced, it had some issues with its Cerakote as well as some QC issues. That model you can actually find for about $4,000 online from what I've seen. The newer models, if you're really lucky, you can find them for about 2K, but they're still exorbitantly expensive pistols. And they're very important because they really are likely the last pistol or the, the last 1911s that are probably going to be in service, guys. And I love the 1911 platform. You guys know that. But the 1911 is going by the way of the dodo, right? Um, at some point in the near future, uh, it, it's going to be completely wiped out from, from those uh, elite forces that still use the M45A1 to great effect, just for higher capacity, potentially more reliable firearms. So that is why I wanted an M45A1. Instead, I ended up with this, this TSAS Raider, which is supposed to emulate a M45A1 and does a really good job so far. Um, I'm going to put a picture on the screen now of an M45A1. I'm going to put this up to the camera. First of all, we have a tan Cerakote, right? The G10 grips are very similar to M45A1 grips. It has the uh, cocking serrations, the slide serrations, similar to the M45A1. Um, it has the same sight system as the M45A1, which is... Kind of interesting because I feel like on a combat weapon you want a ledge so you could rack it off your belt or rack it off of you know a piece of wood or something. Instead, they went with these slanted sights uh, just to I guess reduce a snag hazard. But they are very similar guns. Not perfect because I feel like there'd probably be a lawsuit inbound if they were perfect. But they're very similar looking, so they fill that niche for me. Uh, even down to the front strap not having checkering, which is kind of crazy. I want front strap checkering on my 1911s, but. I'm going to be comparing the fit and the finish to my other 1911s that I have here. So let's eject a mag. And the first thing I want to talk about is the slide to frame fit. Um, as anyone knows, or as everyone knows, when you pick up a nice 1911, the first thing you do is you manipulate the safety. You wiggle the slide back and forth to feel the slop. You pull the trigger, of course. This is clear. Great trigger, by the way. Um, and you just see how the gun feels. And that's the first thing that really astounded me with the platform. Because when we go back to my Colt Gold Cup National Match, I love this gun. Look at that bluing. Beautiful blued gun. Um, check the mag from that. The trigger is absolutely phenomenal. It's a wide body trigger. It's lighter than the M45A1. But there's a couple issues I have with this gun, first of which is going to be the safety. And I'm going to try and show you guys. It's quite difficult to actually actuate that because the little retention pin is overly stiff. And I can push down and it has a little bit of flex to it. Okay? So it's not the best safety. Um, 
this gun feels very good. And I'll get in the slide the frame fit in a second, but the safety just isn't perfect. Uh, beaver tail safety is fine, sights and everything else are fine. Now, back to the M45A1, because like I said, when you get the gun, you're going to immediately start noticing these things. The M45A1 safety is, I'll kind of show you guys, look at how positive that is. That is a phenomenal safety on the up, and then when you go down, a little bit of mush right there, but then it goes back into place. And it's hard to really articulate my point when it comes to safeties. People think you're crazy when you start talking about trigger weights and safeties and shit, but when you have a good safety, you know it. And this safety is phenomenal. The best 1911 safety, honestly, I've ever used. Better than my friend's TRP, better than my Dan Wesson, and better than my Cold Gold Cup. Now, this is a Cerakote finish. So it is, without a doubt, less attractive than a blued 1911. I mean, just look at that. A little oily and dirty, but still, just a phenomenal looking piece. But the Cerakote is uh, pretty even right there's no there's no chips uh, i don't see any like pooling of of the paint um which you'll see on cheaper weapons like high points you see those little creases um it's very evenly applied the g10 is very grippy not overly grippy um but i'm also one of those people that likes to put ho or not not hockey tape uh skateboard skateboard tape on my guns i really like aggressive grips so if you have a little Soy boy hands, uh, this may be a little bit too grippy for you, but for me, um, I think it's perfect. Now, the uh, beaver tail safety is pronounced where it should be, um, and there's no issues whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to have this gun off uh, safe right now. So this gun, obviously, is not worn in the chamber. This is a live weapon um, ready to fire, right? That's what I should say. And if I pull the trigger... Right, it's not firing because the beaver tail safety isn't clicked. If I press it in, it fires. Right, so the beaver beaver tail safety works fine. All the safeties on the gun work perfectly. The finish is great and the grip is great. Um, lastly, I want to talk about uh, slide serrations. These serrations are in between, I would say, dehorned and um, well, not dehorned. What dehorned means is it means a gunsmith, and I'm not saying a gunsmith touched this gun. They didn't. But a gunsmith will go in and they'll kind of round the corners of these sharp serrations and just make it so it's a little bit more pleasurable to touch. You're not going to slice up your hand when you're doing little tactical price, press checks. Um, this is kind of in between dehorned and not dehorned. Honestly, the perfect amount. Uh, I actually wish it was a little bit more grippy, actually, but that's a very minor criticism. Um, other people were, are probably uh, happy that they're like this. Because when you move over to the Colt Gold Cup National Match, these are so freaking sharp that you can legitimately cut yourself on this. Um, I have, I've had leather holsters that this gun has just gouged in because it's so not dehorned that it's, uh, it's perilous, right? It's, it's that aggressive. So a lot of people, I feel like, are going to appreciate that. Um... Now, the last thing I actually want to discuss about the M45A1 before we have our expanded review in the future is the slide to frame fit. And this is where I got worried about every other company on the planet making 1911s because it is so freaking good. Over here, we have a, like I said, Colt Gold Cup national match. And I am going to hold this up to the mic and essentially I'm going to do this. I'm going to shake it for you guys and let you listen. It's a little bit, there's not that much play, right? People that complain about 1911 pay, and I get it, play. I get it when you're buying a really expensive 1911, you want that really tight lockup, I get it. But a lot of people look at Colt and they say, oh, Colt's lockup is terrible, they're really loose guns. I wouldn't say so. There's a little bit of rattle, don't get me wrong, but hopefully you can hear that. There's a little bit of rattle, but it's still a pretty tight gun, especially compared with, like, polymer guns. Now, here's where it gets crazy. The M45A1 is phenomenal lockup for the, for the price. This is a $500 gun, guys. 
hold this up to the mic. Do you hear that? It's so faint. When you go back and forth, there's a little bit of play, but if I shake it, just a little bit of rattle, little bit. Um, that is so much better than, than other guns I've used because I have an Airsoft 1911 here for you. Uh, this is an actual Colt Airsoft gun. I don't know if you guys knew those existed, but they're like patented. Um, this Airsoft gun is, uh, it, it, it represents a lot of lower tier 1911s. And I'm not making fun of companies like Rock Island and Taurus, but you pick one of those guns up and you can go to town on the rattle. This gun is very similar to those rattles. So I'm just gonna put this in front of the mic for you. You hear that? That's a lot of rattle. And the rattle can increase some in reliability, guys. It's just kind of a, it's, it's kind of a fact, but it's an argument for another day. This is what I anticipated the TSOS to be. Instead, I mean, you put a mag in it, I, <laughs> there's just no rattle whatsoever. I, I am so impressed by just the fit and the finish of this firearm so far. Um, the barrel is obviously fully concentric. Uh, the rifling looks great. Um, there's no, you know, there's no pitting. There's no um, uh, uh, steel, like, deformities that I've seen on the internals. Um, and it's just a great gun so far. So I'm really excited to further expand on this M45A1 clone or, or further give you guys a review on this M45A1 because I really think that we could have a contender for the best entry 1911 company. I've heard great things about TSOS. Uh, I've heard so many great things about TSOS that I'm kind of worried that other 1911 manufacturers are gonna be put to shame. Fucking Dan Wesson. Um, and if this gun shoots and is as reliable as my, my first impressions are kind of leading it up to be, I'm going to be really happy. All right. All right. One last part of the video. I just want to show you guys what came in the box. The TSOS comes in a pretty nice little plastic box. Um, there you go. It comes with a brass brush. It comes with a little barrel flag, essentially. And it also comes with two Mechgar magazines, which I will show you right now. These are the Mechgar magazines that other people have had problems with, um, or people have said, hey, throw away their T-Sauce mags. I'm not sure if they're talking about these Mechgar ones because Mechgar makes phenomenal OEM mags, but we shall see. These look pretty high quality. They have a little base plate and they go up to eight rounds. So they're the enhanced capacity models. Um, and then it comes with a bushing wrench. Uh, I don't use bushing wrenches at all because I like to do the, um, essentially it's the high power method of takedown, which I recommend. It's significantly better, um, but you do you. And then at the bottom, we just have the TSAS manual. So that is that. Thank you guys for showing up to my quick preview on the M45A1 clone by TSOS, the TSOS Raider in 45 ACP. And if you do get one of these, you are legally obligated to buy it in the Lord's Caliber 45 ACP because that is the M45A1 cartridge. Um, and stay tuned. We will be having a actual review in the very near future. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you made it this far, like I said, like and comment down below. Subscribe if you enjoy. Make a comment if you have anything you want me to specifically talk about. I'm really bored and I love talking about guns. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.